anytime I introduce a new topic, I like to just define the topic. So we can just start with the definition of chemical kinetics. And the definition is the branch of physical chemistry that is concerned with understanding how fast or how slow chemical reactions occur. That is their rates. So that term rate, reaction rate, rate of reaction, uh, is going to pop up over and over and over again in the discussion on kinetics. And this definition, of course, was from Britannica.com. And one thing that I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page on is that kinetics is not thermodynamics. Those are two completely different things. So in kinetics, we are not looking at uh, how much heat is absorbed or released by a reaction. In other words, how endothermic or exothermic a reaction might be. Uh, we're not talking about the spontaneity of a, of a, uh, a chemical reaction. That's more of a, a thermodynamic thing. You might talk about entropy or Gibbs free energy. Those are thermodynamic properties. Uh, instead, we are only concerning ourselves in kinetics with <clears throat> how fast a reaction is occurring or how slow it's occurring, the speed of the reaction. So reaction, the speed of a reaction is generally described as the uh, rate of a reaction. And anytime you think about the word rate, generally what you're talking about is a change in some quantity uh, per unit of time. So for instance, the speed of a car, that's a rate and the uh, speed that uh, all of our cars in the United States are sort of uh, reported in uh, is the mile per hour. So our speeds are reported in miles per hour. Um, up in Canada, it's kilometers per hour. Probably most of the world, I, I imagine, <laughs> it's kilometers per, per hour. But in the U.S., we say miles per hour because we're just unique like that, I guess. So notice that terminology, though, miles per hour. You're talking about the change in a certain quantity, in this case, change in distance, over, per just means over, divided by, per hour, a change in time. So um, you can set that up as, a, as an expression, like a fraction, to say change in distance over change in time, uh, or in this case, delta x over delta t. Now, the symbol delta, um, I'm not sure if you know, I, I don't... I have a bad habit of assuming that people know things, and, and so I kind of just skip through things really quickly um, without asking people whether they're on the same page or not. So if you're not familiar, the term delta means the change in something, right? Delta anything is the change in that thing. So delta x, that just means final x minus initial x, and delta t, that means final time minus initial time. So another example of a rate would be something like um, my growth in YouTube subscribers. I could quantify that as subscribers per month. That would be a rate. So that would be defined as the change in subscribers over a change in time. Or uh, delta subs, I couldn't find a, a single character symbol that represents YouTube subscribers, so I just put subs. <laughs> delta subs over delta T. And for last month, I think it was like 350 or something like that. I'm trying to get that number up. That's where you guys can help. <laughs> By the way, I do have Super Chats enabled. If anybody is interested in sending a Super Chat, I would wholeheartedly appreciate it. Or if not, if you just want to send me some kind of message, uh, let me know. Um, just give me some feedback. If you have any questions or if you just have any feedback on how the stream is going, I would love to hear it. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move on. So if we consider this chemical reaction here um, where we have hydrogen gas reacting with chlorine gas to produce two moles of hydrogen chloride gas. If we wanted to calculate the rate of this reaction from an initial time to a final time, which I'm calling T1 and T2, right? If I wanted to define the rate of that reaction or express that in terms of a formula, um, I could choose, let's say I choose one of the reactants. Let's say I'm choosing the, uh, the hydrogen, the H2. That would simply be minus change in concentration of H2 over delta T, or final time minus initial time. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure we understand what this, uh, what these brackets mean. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to go to the whiteboard. <laughs> so here we go. Now we're at the whiteboard. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this. Anyway, so the brackets, right? Concentration. So bracket, What that means, anything in brackets, I'll just call it X, that just means concentration of X. And the unit that we use, 
for concentration is moles per liter, right? So whenever you see something in brackets, what you're talking about is the molar concentration or the molarity, if you will. Molarity is usually a term that's applied only to uh, solutions, but molar concentration, moles per liter, that can be applied to solutions. That can also be applied to any reagent. It can, it can be applied to gases too. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We understand that the concentration of something is the moles of that thing per volume, how much vo volume it's, uh, it's taking up. Okay, so now that we've, we've got that understood, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. So, as I was saying a moment ago, if I'm talking about the rate of a reaction, it's minus delta concentration of H2 over delta T. Uh, in other words, uh, it's minus this whole thing right here, where the numerator of this fraction is the um, concentration of hydrogen at time 2, minus the concentration of hydrogen in moles per liter, of course, um, at time 1. And that whole thing is going to be divided by, um, it should be T2 minus T1. <laughs> okay, I'm a little embarrassed I, I got this wrong, but this should be T2 and this should be T1. I do apologize. Now you might be thinking, you might be thinking, why the negative sign? Why do we put that negative in there? The reason why we put a negative in there is because since the reactants are reacting together to form products, the concentration is going to decrease over time, right? So in other words, the concentration of hydrogen at time two is going to be smaller than the concentration of hydrogen at time one. And so this expression right here, this difference between hydrogen concentration two and hydrogen concentration one, this is going to be negative, again, because this number is smaller than this number, right? And so that makes the whole expression negative. And so the reason why we put a negative sign and multiply the whole thing essentially by negative one is because uh, in general, um, rates are only positive. You can only have a positive reaction rate. And this is just sort of the sign convention that has been uh, universally adopted by chemists is that you, you're not gonna have a negative rate all rates are positive. So to make sure all rates are positive, we take something that's already uh, negative and we multiply it by negative one to make it positive. That is what we do. Okay, so um, another way we can define the rate, so, that's, so this expression up here is defining the rate in terms of a reactant. Um, we could also define the rate in terms of a product. So for instance, if we wanted to uh, define this reaction uh, in terms of how fast, this hydrogen chloride is being produced rather than how fast the hydrogen or the chlorine are being uh, consumed, we could express that in the following way, where we have the rate is equal to one half times the change in concentration of the hydrogen chloride divided by the change in time. So one half delta concentration of HCl over delta T. Now you might be thinking, well, what is, where does that one half come from? Well, that factor, that one half is related to the stoichiometry of the reaction. So in order to have a single rate for the entire reaction, right, we have to take stoichiometry into account. Because if you, th if you think about this, since two moles of HCl are produced uh, for every one mole of hydrogen that is consumed, the rate at which the HCl is forming is going to be twice as fast as the rate at which the H2 is being consumed, right? So in order to sort of uh, um, have a single rate for the entire reaction, we, uh, we make sure we take stoichiometry into account. And so we divide by the coefficient or multiply by the inverse of that coefficient. All right, so let's move on. So this is sort of just a graphic representation of, of this reaction. So we have the, the blue, these, uh, this is a concentration versus time curve, right? So, and um, as you would probably already predict, the product, the HCl, the concentration of that stuff is increasing over time uh, because it's being formed. 
and the hydrogen, the reactant, which is being consumed over time, its concentration is, is decreasing, right? So there's no, there's no shock there. And another thing uh, that's important about this is look at the, the sort of the, uh, the curvature of this line. It's not just a straight line. It's a, uh, it's a curved line, right? And that has, uh, that'll have some implications as well uh, as, we, as we move forward. So the rate of the reaction is essentially, you can think of it as like the slope of a line, right? You can think of it as the slope of the line that is sort of tangent to the curve or overlapping or touching it at just one point. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical kinetics playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and take care.